Hello guys, welcome to our first ever online physics class. And in this class, we are going to be taking the physical quantities and also dimensional analysis of this physical quantity. At the end of this lecture, students should be able to distinguish between fundamental quantities and derived quantities. They should be able to state the units of physical quantity and they should be able also to state the dimensions of these physical quantities and then use dimensional analysis to check the correctness of an equation, derive the units of physical quantities and derive the exact form of a relation between major quantities. So without further ado, let's dive into the course. Question is, what are physical quantities? A physical quantity is a property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement. Let me take that again. A physical quantity is a property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement. Now, if you look at what we have on the screen, this is a clock, maybe a wall clock and this is a tape measuring tape or measurement tape and then we have a sack of rice now each of these diagrams you see here or each of these things you see here they measure one quantity or the other for instance your clock measures what time your tape measures length and then your rice measures a quantity which is the weight or the mass that is present the mass of rice that is present are we getting it now so any property of a material or system that can be quantified by measurement is what is called the physical quantities it's what is called the physical quantity now what is the usefulness of physical quantities for instance, if I say to you, two, just two, o oh, oh. Now, it may not make sense. Are we getting it now? Until you say, maybe two, o oh, oh, p.m. Then I will say, this person talking about time. It may be two meter. It may be two kg. Are we getting it now? So, the physical quantity usually comprised of, it consists of the magnitude and a unit consists of the magnitude and a unit the physical quantities consist of magnitude plus units now it helps us to distinguish between what we are actually talking about like i said for instance if i say 50 it doesn't make any sense until i say 50 kg then you know i'm talking about mass in the same vein if I say 20, it doesn't make sense until I say maybe 20 meters. Then you should know that I'm talking about length. We are talking about length. Now, how about if I say 100? This may be meter, this may be kg, and it may be anything. But if I say 100 pm, what am I talking about? Time. Is that not so? That is it. Are we getting it now? So, physical quantities are quantities or they are the property of a material or a system that can be measured by measurement or that can be quantified by measurement. It usually consists of the magnitude plus the unit. All physical quantity comprise of the magnitude and the unit. They comprise of the magnitude and the unit. Are we getting it now? So, let's progress with the class. Now, say physical quantities are characteristic property of an object that can be measured or calculated from other measurement. They consist of a magnitude and a unit. We've said this before. Now, physical quantities are classified into two. The physical quantities are classified into two, which of course I know everyone knows this. The two classifications are we have the fundamental 
quantity fundamental quantity we have the fundamental quantity sorry fundamental and then we have derived quantity derived so physical quantities are classified into two we have the fundamental quantity we have the fundamental quantity and then we have the derived quantity we have the fundamental quantity and we have the derived quantity now the next thing we are going to look at is the dimensions of a physical quantity the dimension of a physical quantity shows how the physical quantity is related to the fundamental quantity the dimension of a physical quantity shows how the physical quantity is related to the fundamental quantity now when we talk about the physical quantity we mean other physical quantities like derived dimensional analysis we can say shows how the fundamental quantities are related how the fundamental quantities are related to the derived quantity the physical quantity or the dimensional analysis rather shows how the fundamental quantities are related to the derived quantity it shows how the fundamental quantities are related to the derived quantities now let's look at the fundamental quantities and their dimensions and units let's look at the fundamental quantities their dimensions and units the fundamental quantities we have there are about seven of them there are about seven fundamental quantity but we are going to take the three basic ones which are mass so let's start by saying this is quantity dimension and then we have the units quantity dimension and units now the quantity we are going to take first is mass now the dimension of most physical quantity is usually their first letter capitalized is usually their first letter capitalized so the dimension for quantity like mass will be m and the unit is kilogram mass is measured in kilogram the next one is length the dimension for length is l and the unit is meter the next one is time dimension for time is t and the unit is what is seconds then we have other dimension other fundamental quantities but these three are the basic ones these three are the basic quantities or we can say basic fundamental it's more like a tautology but it's just to distinguish between these ones and the others that follows so these are the three basic fundamental quantities which are mass length and time mass length and time and their units are kg meter and seconds respectively now let's consider the other fundamental quantities for instance if we have current current is a fundamental quantity the dimension for current is a which is ampere are we getting it a from ampere and then the unit is ampere dimension is a and the unit is ampere now the next one is we have other fundamental quantity the next one is luminous intensity luminous intensity now the dimension for luminous intensity sometime is given as j or you can give it as the normal symbol cd which is the candela 
Now the unit is candela, which is which is CD. Then we have amount of substance. Amount of substance. Now the dimension for amount of substance is the mole. And the unit is also mole. Then we have temperature. Temperature. The dimension for temperature is Kelvin, which is K. The unit is also Kelvin. So these are the seven fundamental quantities and their dimensions. We have mass, length, time. Then we have current measured in ampere and the dimension is A. Luminous intensity measured in candela. The dimension is either J or CD and the unit is candela, which is CD. Amount of substance is mole, mole for the unit also. Temperature, the unit is curving and the dimension is also K. So these are the seven fundamental quantities and their dimension. But of utmost importance to our study is mass, length, and time. The mass, the length, and time. We are going to be using this theory more often as the lecture progresses. Now, derived quantities. First of all, we ought to define what the fundamental quantities are. Now, as name implies, fundamental quantities are those quantities that do not depend on any other quantity. They do not depend on other quantity for their formation. These are quantities that do not depend on other quantities for their formation. They do not depend on any other quantity for their formation. They are independent quantity. For instance, these days we have so many independent people living on their own. They don't need anybody to survive. Are we getting it now? So such quantities that do not depend on any other quantity for their formations are known as the fundamental quantity. We may need to echo that again. Any quantity at all that do not depend on any other quantity for their formation, they are known as fundamental quantity. We can also call them the independent quantities. They do not depend on any other quantity for their formation. They are stand-alone quantities. Any of such quantities are known as what the fundamental quantity. For instance, mass do not depend on anything added together to get your mass. The mass is a stand-alone quantity and hence it is regarded as a fundamental quantity. We have length and we have time also as fundamental quantities. So let's go to derived quantities. What are derived quantities? Now from the name, you can say derived quantities. To derive means to what? To draw out from. To draw out from. So derived quantities are quantities that are gotten from other quantities. Any quantity at all gotten from other quantity are known as derived quantities. They are dependent on the algebraic sum or let's say by multiplication division of one or more of the fundamental quantities. Are we getting it now? So in to get the derived quantities, see that you add more or more fundamental quantity, multiply them, divide them or do anything to them, combine them together in specific ratios in order to get derived quantities. Now we are going to take speed and velocity first. Speed is distance over time. And then velocity is given as displacement Velocity is given as displacement over time. Now, both speed and velocity have the same 
dimensions. Both speed and velocity has the same dimension. Why? Because they are almost the same. The difference is distance is scalar and then displacement is a vector quantity. And of course, we know the differences between vector and scalar. Scalar quantities are quantities that have magnitude, magnitude, but no direction, no direction, no direction. So any quantity that has magnitude but no direction is a scalar quantity and speed is one of them. Speed is scalar. Why displacement is vector? And we know that vector quantities are quantities that has both magnitude and then they have directions, which is often represented with theta to show the angle, let's say 30 degrees. So that is the difference between physical um, the distance and displacement. I mean speed, uh, distance and displacement. Speed is distance over time, which is scalar, and velocity is displacement over time, which is what? Vector. Now, in the real explanation, what is the difference between, or let's state the differences between distance and displacement. For instance, Mr. A starts a journey from this point, and then ends here. Let's say the starting point is 0 meter, and then ends at 5 meter meter now he approached the zone in a particular direction let's say in the what eastern direction from if this is the cardinal point we have north we have west we have south and this is what east approach the journey in the eastern direction that is to tell you that mr a walked how many meters if you subtract five minus zero is what five meters so the distance between here and here is five meter in which of the direction in the eastern direction now that is displacement so we can say that displacement is the difference between where you are and where you started your journey the difference between where you started your journey or where you are currently and where you started your journey the differences between where you are currently and where you started your journey is your displacement in a particular direction we may, must take cognizance of that. In a particular direction, if the motion is directionless, then it becomes just distance. Are we getting it now? In a particular direction, the distance or differences between where you are currently and where you started your journey. For instance, if you say a man started a journey at point zero and then he walked to, let's say, this point and then he walked back to this point, which where he started the journey. He walked here to this point, let's say five meter, and then walked back to this point, which is another five meters. Now, this man has traveled distances. The distance is like the journey, the length of journey you covered. He has covered distances, which is five meter plus five meter is how many meter? Ten meter but the displacement here is zero why because he started the journey from here and he also ended here so the difference between where he started and where he is now is what zero so we can say displacement is just more like a real life situation where you say somebody has been displaced it means he has been removed from where he is to another position or to another place entirely are we getting the differences now? One is scalar, the other is a vector quantity. So let's look at the dimension for displacement and distance. Dimension for displacement and distance. Now, we talked about, um, sorry, speed and velocity rather. We said speed is distance all over time. Now, what is the dimension for distance? Distance is measured in length. So the dimension will be L. And then time, dimension for T is 
or time is t and therefore the dimension for speed will be meter per i mean the dimension for uh, time will be length over time length over time sorry for that be length over time now if this t is coming up in algebra or in indices if you have l over t and this t wants to come up what happened you put a negative one here so this gives us lt minus one so this is lt minus one and then the unit will be length is measured in meter time is measured in seconds and then you have minus one so the unit of speed is meters per second it's meter per second now same is applicable to velocity velocity is displacement displacement all over time now displacement is also measured in length all over time dimension for time is t and this will also give us lt minus one which is meter per seconds so that is the first case now the next one is acceleration now what is the formula for acceleration acceleration is equal to velocity all over time now what was the dimension for velocity calculated is lt minus one all over what is the dimension for time is t now whenever you have something like this you make it to be linear by bringing the t at the denominator upward so this gives us lt minus one times if t crosses up what is it going to give to us it's going to give us t minus one because i said that wherever anything under is crossing up it gives us minus the power so this one here t starting on its own means t has an invisible one so if it is crossing up becomes minus one however if t is squared here if it is crossing up it becomes t minus two but since it's standing on its own it means that it has an invisible one here so it becomes t minus one now according to the law of indices if you have something like this this lt if the bases are equal what do you do to the power and multiplication is in between them what do you do to the power you add them so this becomes minus one plus bracket minus one and this gives us lt minus one plus times minus is minus one and this gives us lt minus one minus one is minus two and that is the solution to that question so the dimension for acceleration is lt minus two and the unit will be meter per second square the unit will be meters per second square the unit will be meters per second square i believe that is clear enough let's take the next one the next one says vol um, force what is the dimension for force what is the dimension for force now force is given as mass times acceleration that is the formula for force mass times acceleration now our force will be equal to what is dimension for mass m times dimension for acceleration is lt minus 2 according to what we've stated here dimension for acceleration is lt minus 2 dimension for force will now be m because the dimension for mass is m times that of acceleration which is lt minus 2 and then we have f will be m l t minus 2 so this is the dimension for force and m is measured in kg mass is measured in kg length in meter and then time in seconds so the unit for force is kg meter per second square the unit for force is kg meter per second square which is usually given as newton if you don't want to write kg meter per second square you can write newton so that is the dimension for force 
that is the dimension for force mrt minus 2 so if you are given what is the dimension for force your correct answer will be mrt minus 2 because force is mass times acceleration force is mass times acceleration the dimension for mass is m and the dimension for acceleration is rt minus 2 so that is the solution to that now let's look at the next one the next one is volume what do you think will be the dimension for volume now volume is equal to length times breadth times height now the length is a distance the breadth is also a distance and also the height is a distance now the dimension of distance is l this will also be l and this will also be l so l times l times l will give us l raised to the power of 3 so the dimension for volume is l to the power of 3 and the unit will be length is measured in meter then raised to the power of 3 which is meters cube so that is the answer to that one volume is l raised to the power of 3 which is meters cube volume is l raised to the power of 3 which is meters cube i believe it's simple enough volume is l raised to the power of 3 which is meters cube ask your question no fear Leg, man, this one. Mm. The, the length is distance breadth is distance height is also what distance are you getting it for instance if i should draw let's say this is a bus and then i have it like this now we have this as the height right yeah. are we getting it the height is the distance from here to here is that also are we getting it now now here is the uh the the breadth the breadth is like somewhere around here isn't it this is the breadth now is the distance from here to here are you getting it now so all of them you see that they are what distances if this is our length or normally this is supposed to be uh this this is our height this is our breadth and this is our height uh, mm, sorry these are heights from here like this is our height are you getting it from here like this is our length and from here like this is our breadth you can see that all of them is distance from here to here is a distance isn't it from here to here is also what distance and from here to here is also what another distance do you get it? So all of them, they are distances. And hence, we will use the dimension for distance to uh, represent each of them. Dimension for distance here is what? Length. Are you getting it? This one also is length and this one also is what? Length. So we can say that length times breadth times height is distances showing different what? Angles and different representing different parts of this cube. Are you getting it now? So that is why it is length times length times length, which is a raised to the power of 3 and this is meters cube you get the points now so that is for that now the next one is pressure the formula for pressure the formula for pressure is force over area now pressure will be equal to where's dimension for force we said here where's dimension for force what is the dimension for force? MRT. MRT raised to the power of minus 2. Are you getting it? That's what you're supposed to say. MRT raised to the power of what? Minus 2. Are we getting it now? So this will be what? In place of force, we can put MRT raised to the power of what? Minus 2. All over. The uh, formula for area. Area is length times breadth. Is that not so? Now we said length is measured i mean uh, length is distance isn't it and also breadth is what distance so all of them will have dimension of what l times l is that also so if we should erase this from here we are going to have 
let's try it together. This will be P is equal to, we have M L T minus two. Is that also mm -hmm. all over here will be now be what L times what L. Abi, yeah. so P will be what M L T minus two all over L times L is what mm -hmm. L square. Now I said if this one should come up, what will happen? Here we change to minus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this becomes M L T minus two. I should erase this from here to allow us to have more space. MLT minus 2 times this L has to come up, right? So if it comes up, you become L minus 2. Now, according to the law of indices, we have to, first of all, rearrange this. If we rearrange this in such a way that all the L comes together, what is it going to give to us? It's going to give us ML times what this l comes here becomes l minus 2 isn't it then times what t minus 2 if the bases are equal and multiplication is in between then what do we do we add the powers is that also so if we add the power what is it going to give to us m l this gives us 1 plus bracket minus 2 is that also times t minus 2 now this will give us m l now plus times minus is minus 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 1. Then T minus 2. So this is the dimension for pressure. Is that clear? Now, this dimension for pressure, what will be the unit? The unit will be mass is measured in kilogram. Length is measured in meter. So we have raised to the power of 1. And time is measured in what? Seconds. So this will be the unit of pressure. And this is the dimension for pressure. I believe it's clear enough. Mm? So let's talk about the next. The next is density. Now, the most important thing about this stuff is once you know the, you, the, the formula, you should be able to state the dimension. Are we getting it now? Now, what that's density, right? Yes. Now, density means mass all over volume density means what mass all over volume mass all over volume the formula for density is mass all over volume the formula for density is mass all over volume exactly so this will be the dimension for mass is what m is that also now, that of volume we did is L raised to the power of what? 3. So, if this L raised to the power of 3 crosses up, what are we going to have? ML minus what? 3. And that is the solution to that question. ML minus 3. So, if we want to change this now to units, this gives us what? The dimen uh, unit for mass is kg, right? Yes. And the unit for length is what? Meter. Unit for this will now be minus what? 3. Do you get the points now? So that is how to derive the dimension of this physical quantity. First of all, note the formula. If you have noted the formula, then you can now easily substitute in the dimensions. Knowing that the dimension for mass is m, that for length is l, and that for time is what? t. Are you getting it now? So that is clear. In Let's take these questions now. So let's look at the dimensions of other quantities. Now we have work, work and energy. Now the formula for work is what? Force times distance. Formula for work is what? Force, force times, times distance. distance. Are you getting it now? Now if the formula for work is force times distance, what do you think the dimension will be? Now in an initial or previous example, we said that force has the dimension of mlt minus 2. Is that also times distance? Of course, we know that the dimension of distance is what? L. So at this point in time, what do we do? Collect like terms. Let all the m come to one side. So we have mlt 
times this other L here, right? Times what? T minus 2. And this will give us M. L times L is what? L square. Then T minus 2. Is that not so? So that is the dimension for work. Now, the unit will be mass is kg. Is that not so? Length is meter square and then second square. Dimension for work and energy. Now, note something. The dimension for work is also the dimension for energy. Are you getting it now? Dimension for work is also dimension for what? Energy. So we can say that the dimension for energy will also be m l square t minus what? 2. Is that clear enough? Now, let's look at the next one. Power. Power is given as energy over time. Power is given as what? Energy over time. Now, if power is given as energy over time, what will be the dimension for power? Dimension for energy is what? ML square T minus 2. Is that not so? All over time. Dimension for time will be T. Now, if this T crosses up, what will it become? To become minus 1. Is that not so? So this gives us ML square T minus 2 times T minus 1. That is clear enough, right? So, now, according to the law of indices, if the bases are equal, what do you do to the power? You add them. If multiplication is in between them, is that not so? Now, this gives us ML. Then we have square here. ML square T. Then you have minus 2 plus bracket minus 1. That is clear enough, right? And this gives us ML square T minus 2. Plus times minus is what? Minus. minus, right? So we have minus 2 minus 1. And this gives us ML square T minus 2 minus 1 is what? Minus 3. Minus three. Are you getting it now? Minus 3. So this is the dimension for power. Power is M L square T minus 3. What do we think will be the units for power? Power will be what? Mass is measured in kilogram, right? Length is measured in what? Meter. And time in what? Um? Seconds. Time is measured in seconds. Mass is measured in kilogram. Length is measured in meters. And time is measured in seconds. So P will be kg meters per second cube. Are we getting it now? So this is the power, dimension for power. Now the next one we are going to look at is dimension for impulse. The dimension for impulse. What do you think would be the dimension for impulse? Now, first of all, we need to know what impulse is. The formula for impulse is force times time. What is the formula for impulse? Force times time. Now, the dimension for force is ml t minus 2. What is the dimension for force? ml t minus 2. Are you clear on that? Dimension for force is what? ml t minus 2. Are you getting it now? So, times Dimension for time is T. Is that not so? So this gives us ML. If the bases are equal and multiplication is in between, them, what do we do? We add the power. So this gives us T minus 2 plus 1. And this gives us ML T minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So this is dimension for impulse. And the units will be mass, as I said, is measured in kg. Length is measured in meter and time is measured in what seconds so this is the unit for impulse kg meter per seconds exactly enough so that is the dimension for that now let's look at the following questions say question one what is the dimension 
of viscosity. What is the dimension of viscosity? Now, the formula for viscosity, viscosity is equal to force over area times velocity, velocity gradient. Now, when you hear of the word viscosity, what comes to your mind? If this is water, let's say there are some quantities of water here, and this is desert. If you are turning each of them out, which do you think will come out speedily? Is the water. The water will come out, come out faster as compared to the diesel or a coagulated oil. Why? Because the diesel is more viscous. Are we getting now? Viscosity is like the force of attraction between molecules of liquids that makes them to be held more together. So the water will come out first before the diesel because of the viscous force there. So viscosity is force over area times velocity gradient. Now velocity gradient, velocity gradient is velocity all over length. What is velocity gradient? Velocity over length. What is velocity gradient? Velocity over length. Are you getting it? Velocity over length is velocity gradient. So if velocity over length is velocity gradient, what are we going to get for each of these cases now? Now, the, let's use Vg as velocity gradient. The dimension for velocity is Lt minus 1. And the dimension for length is what? L. L cancel L. And this gives us what? T minus 1. Is that not so? So in place of velocity gradient, what are we going to put there? T minus 1. Now, Dimension for force, so let's say viscosity is equals to, dimension for force is mlt minus 2 divided by area is L square. Velocity gradient is what? T minus 1. So if everything should come up, what are we going to have? If everything should come up, what are we going to have? mlt minus 2 times L minus 2 times t1 are you getting it now why is it t1 because when this minus is coming up it becomes what positive it's clear enough right so this one now will now be m we call it like terms let all the l comes to one side and all the t goes to another so this gives us what l times what l minus 2 is that not so times t minus 2 times t to the power of 1 so this gives us m l the power is what? 1 here. So 1 minus 1 is what? Minus 1. Is that not so? Then t minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So this is the dimension for velocity gradients. m minus 1, ml minus 1, t minus 1. And the unit will be what? Kg, abi, then meters. Is that not so? Time is what? Seconds. So kg meter minus 1, power 1, and then um, seconds raised to the power of minus one. This will be the unit. That is clear enough, right? Now let's look at what option is that? ML minus one, T minus one is option what? Option D or option C? Look at it very well. ML minus one, T minus one. What is the correct answer there? Option C. Option C, right? So option C is the correct answer to this question. It's clear enough, right? Now let's go to the next. The next one says, what is dimension of surface tension coefficient? Surface tension. Now, the formula for surface tension is force over length. What is the formula for surface tension? Force over length. Now, the dimension for force is mLt minus 2. And the dimension for length is what? L. Is that also? L cancel L. What are we left with? Mt minus 2. What option is that? Option B. Is that also? So option B is the correct answer to this question. Let's go to the next. The next one says, what is the dimension of universal gravitational constant? G. Universal gravitational constant. Now, the gravitational constant is the force of attraction 
or the gravitational force is the force of attraction acting between two objects on Earth. For instance, if this is object 1, M1, and this is object 2, M2, there will be a force of attraction between them, but it is, infinite, uh, it is too small to be felt. Are we getting it now? Now, the universal gravitational uh, force is different from the acceleration due to gravity, which is G. There are two different Gs in physics. One is G, small g, and the other one is what? Big G. Now, the universal gravitational constant is given by the um, gravitational law, which states that F is G, M1, M2, all over arrow square. Are you getting it now? So, now, we want to get G. So, what do we do? We make G subject of the formula. Abi, how do we make G subject of the formula? Use F to multiply arrow square. What is that going to give to us? F arrow square. Is that also? Is equals to use 1 to multiply G M1 M2. What are you going to have? G M1 M2. So to get G, what do you think we can do here? Divide both sides by M1 M2, right? So we divide both sides by M1 over M2. This one is M1 over M2. This cancels this. What are we going to have here? G is F arrow square divided by M1 M2. Now let's put each of the appropriate dimensions now. So we have G. We have G is equals to F arrow square all over M1 M2. Now, what is the dimension for force? MLT minus 2. Is that also? Now, arrow is a radius. And radius is the distance from the, from the center of a circle to the circumference. The distance from the center of a circle to the circumference is the word radius. So, it is a distance. And because it is a distance, it will have the dimension for distance. Dimension for distance is what? L. But R is squared here. So we are going to square what? So all over. Dimension for mass is M. There are two masses here. So we say M times M. And this will give us M. Now L squared times L will give us L to the power of what? 3. Then T minus 2. All over. M times M is what? M squared. Is that not so? Now, we can do something quickly here. If this M cancels one M from here, how many M are we left with here? One. So, this will give us L raised to the power of 3, T minus 2, divided by what? M. Now, if this M comes up, will it become positive or it will become minus 1? Become minus 1, right? If this M should come up, it becomes what? Minus 1. So, this gives us minus 1, L to the power of 3, and t to the power of minus 2. And the unit will be what? Mass is measured in kg. Length is measured in meter. And time is measured in seconds. So this is the dimension. And then this is the unit. So why did you put M1, M2 and just... Now, M1 and M2 are masses. Are you getting it? No matter the mass, this one is just to distinguish that this is one mass and this is another mass. Okay. But they are all masses. All masses are assumed to have the dimension of what? M. Is that clear enough? Yeah. So that is that. So the correct answer to that question will be which of the option? M minus 1, L raised to the power of 3, and T minus 2. Where is the correct answer here? Is option what? C. Option C is the correct answer. So, that is the solution to that particular one. So, let's look at another. What is the dimension of coefficient of friction? Now, the coefficient of friction is given by the formula. Frictional force all over normal reaction. Given by the formula word, frictional force all over the normal reaction. Now, normal reaction is a force. You get to learn this later on normal reaction is what a force also frictional force is also a what 
a force. So it means that normal reaction is a force and frictional force is what? A force. Hence, the dimension of coefficient of friction will be frictional force is a force and force has the dimension of mLT minus 2. Normal reaction is a force and it has the dimension of mLT minus 2. Is that not so? So if both of them cancel out, what are we left with? 1. So coefficient of friction, we can say, is dimensionless that is to say it doesn't have a dimension so the correct answer to this question is option d it is dimensionless are we clear on that now let's proceed what is the dimension of stress pressure and young modulus what is the dimension of stress pressure and young modulus now stress has the formula force over area and the dimension for force is mlt minus 2 dimension for area is l square therefore the dimension for stress will be m L. Now, if this other L under comes up, what will it become here? It becomes minus what? 2. Is that not so? Times T minus 2. And this will give us M L. Now, minus 1, right? Why? Because this is 1. 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 1. Then T minus 2. So the dimension is M L minus 1 T minus 2. Now, same is applicable to pressure, which we solved before. Pressure is force over area. It has the dimension of ML minus 1, T minus what? 2. Do you get it now? Now, Young modulus is stress all over strain. Young modulus is stress all over strain. And since Young modulus is stress all over strain, the dimension for stress as calculated is what? L, ML minus 1, T minus 2. All over. Strain is dimensionless. Strain is what? Dimensionless. So we may put it as 1. Are you getting it now? The reason why strain is dimensionless is because strain is extension over length. Strain is what? Strain is what? Extension over length. Extension is distance. For instance, if you hold the rubber band and you stretch it out, are we getting it? The difference between the original um, length of the rubber and the new length is what is called extension. Do you get it now? Like elastic something, if you hold it and stretch it, it has an original length. The difference between the original length and when you stretch it, the length it gives to you is what is called the extension. All of them, they are what? Distance. Even length is what? Distance, which is original length. They are distance, distance. So they will cancel that to give us one. So that is why I said strain is dimensionless. Is that clear enough now? So this gives us M L minus one T minus two. So we can say that stress, pressure, and young modulus have the same word dimension. They have the same word dimensions. They have the same dimensions. And that dimension is M L minus one T minus 2 making option d the correct answer to this question now the next one is what is the dimension for angular momentum now momentum momentum is regarded as mass times velocity now note this velocity is linear velocity is what linear velocity Velocity is linear velocity. Now, there is a relationship between velocity and angular. Because we have two types of momentum. We have linear momentum. Linear momentum. And two, we have angular momentum. We have linear momentum. And two, we have the angular momentum. Are you getting it now? 
Now, the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity is given as V is equals to arrow W. Relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity is given as V is equals to ROW. So, in place of this V, what do you think we can put? ROW, right? So, our momentum will be M. In place of V, we'll now put what? ROW. Now, this W is velocity. M is mass and arrow is radius. Now, what is the dimension for mass? M. Dimension for radius is what? Length. L. Are we getting it? And dimension for velocity, which is angular velocity, is LT minus 1. Because velocity is what? M LT minus 1. Exactly. So, this one now gives us M. L times L is what? L square. Then T minus 1. Is that so? So, the correct answer is M L square. T minus 1. ML square T minus 1. And that is option B. ML square T minus 1. Now, the next one is which of the following has the dimensions of this? M minus 1 T minus 2. M minus 1 T minus 2. Now, we need to bring the units out we have m minus one t minus two what is here mass kg is that also or let's say this is mass mass then mass over time which do you think have this dimension time square now we said the uh, surface tension is what Um, surface tension is the formula for surface tension is force over length are we getting it it's force over length so force is mlt minus 2 and length is l this cancels this it won't give us this so, which do you think is the correct answer now? Which do you think? It cannot be tug. Tug, let's do tug together. Tug means force times distance. Are you getting it? Force times distance, which is force is mlt minus 2 and arrow, which is distance is l so this times this is ml square t minus 2 it cannot either be viscosity and it cannot be stress so maybe something is wrong with the equation let's go to the next now according to the quantum theory the energy of a photon of frequency v is given by e is equals to hv where h is the Planck's constant, what is the dimensional formula for h? v, this symbol here that looks like v is the frequency. Frequency. And frequency is talking about time. Frequency is talking about what? Time. So energy, dimension for energy is what? We say energy is force times distance. Is that not so? So, which is MLT minus 2 times distance is what? L. And this gives us ML square T minus 2 for energy. So, we can say that our if E is equal to H times frequency, H will be what? H will be equal to energy all over the frequency is that also so the energy is ml square t minus 2 frequency is what is time are you clear on that mm -hmm. frequency is what time. time so this gives us ml square t now listen if this one should 
across up what are we going to have now note frequency is like one all over time frequency is one all over what time are you getting it now frequency is like one all over time so if frequency is one all over time it means it will be t minus one as a dimension is that also so this becomes t minus one now if this t minus one crosses upward what will it become this become minus two times t raised to the power of one right power are the same what do you do to the basis are the same what do you do to the power add them so this gives us ml square t minus two plus one is what minus one and that makes option b the correct answer ml square t minus two i believe that is clear enough now let's go to the next t minus one right t minus one sorry about that ml square t minus one now let's look at the next what is the dimension of moment of inertia now moment of inertia is mass times the radius of gyration which is m arrow square where's dimension for mass m dimension for radius is what L. So we have ML square. ML square, which is kg meter square. So the dimension for moment of inertia is ML square. And that is option C. ML square. Very easy. Moment of inertia is mass times the radius of gyration square. Dimension for mass is m. Dimension for radius is l square. This gives us m l square. So that is that. Now let's look at the next. Now, the next thing we are going to do is to use the method of dimensions to determine the correctness of an equation. Use the method of dimension. To determine the correctness of an equation for instance if you are given an equation like this v is equals to u plus a t for this equation to be dimensionally correct it means that v must be equal to u which must be equal to what a t it means that the dimensions of v must be equal to the dimension of u and that must be also equal to the dimension of what? A T. Are you getting it now? So if you solve and you discover that the dimension here is different from the one here, and it's also different from the one here, it means that the equation is not dimensionally correct. So let's try now. The dimension for V U plus A T. Let's write it out again. Now, what is the dimension for velocity? lt minus 1 now this is final velocity and this is initial velocity but the two velocities are the same because they are velocity velocity the only difference is that one is telling you when the journey started and the other one is telling you when the journey was finished so they will have the same dimension so lt minus 1 is equal to also here will be what lt minus 1 plus Acceleration, the dimension for acceleration is Lt minus 2 times, dimension for time is what? T. So this becomes Lt minus 1 is equal to Lt minus 1 plus what is the, um, what are we going to do here? The bases are equal, color 1, you add the power. Here is an invisible one. Minus 1, minus 2 plus 1 is what? Minus 1. So you see that what we have here. Is the same as what we have here and it's also the same as what we have here so we can say that this equation is dimensionally correct or dimensionally consistent so the equation is dimensionally correct the equation is dimensionally correct now let's look at the next which of this equation is dimensionally correct now for the sake of this lecture I will go to the one that is dimensionally correct because I know it now, it's left for you to check out the rest ones to see why they are not correct. Now, the correct answer is option B, which is one of the equations of motion. This equation is dimensionally correct. Let's 
verify that fact. If we have v square is equals to u square plus 2as, the dimension for v is what? lt minus 1. It is what? Squared. Dimension for u is lt minus 1 also. It is squared plus the dimension. This is 2 is dimensionally, is a dimensionless constant, so you may not need to put it. And a is rt minus 2 times s is distance. Dimension for distance is l. So if you use this square to open through the bracket, what are you going to have here? l square t minus 2, l square t minus 2, because l times l times square here will give us l square t minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. Plus here will be l times l is what? l square. Then we have t minus 2. So you see that what is here is the same as this and is the same as this. So this equation is said to be dimensionally, dimensionally what? Correct. Dimensionally correct. Now, you saw that I removed the 2 because 2 is a dimensionless constant. Dimensionless constant. So you may not need to put it. 2 is a dimensionless constant. 2 is a dimensionless constant. Okay, let's look at the next. Use the method of dimension to choose the equation which is correct. Now, the correct answer is V is equal to U plus AT, which we have proved before. Look at it here. V is equal to U plus AT. We say this is dimensionally correct. Hence, the correct answer is option A. U plus AT, which is dimensionally correct correct now the displacement of a particle is given by s is equal to s is equal to a plus bt plus ct square deduce the dimensions are units of the constant a b and c appearing in the equation now we started by saying that for anything to be dimensionally correct it means, for instance, when we had this v is equal to u plus a t, we said for it to be dimensionally correct, v must be equal to u, and this must be equal to what? a t. Same thing applicable here. If this equation must be di dimensionally correct, it means s must be equal to a, s must be equal to b t, s must be equal to what? c t square. So if s is equal to a, it means a is equal to what? s and s was given as the distance so our a will be equal to dimension for distance is what l so the dimension for distance here is l and the unit is meter dimension for a here is l and the unit is meters now let's take the next one s is equal to bt to get b divide both side by t t cancels t your B is S all over T. B will be equal to dimension for S is L all over. Dimension for T, which is time, is T. So this gives us L if this T crosses or becomes T minus 1, which equals to meters per second. So this is dimension for B. B is L T minus 1 and the unit is meter per second. Now, the last but not the least is ct square. s is equals to ct square. s is equals to ct square. s is equals to ct square. Now, what will be the dimension for this? Now, s to get c divide both sides by c square. Is that also t square cancel t square? c will be what? s all over t square dimension for s is length that of t squared so c will be l t crosses or becomes t minus 2 is done also which is meters per second square so this is the unit and then this is the dimension of that physical quantity oh let's look at another 
Now, maybe you should try this one yourself and see how much you can go about it. Now, this one says, if S is equals to AT squared plus BT plus C, if S is AT squared plus BT plus C, where S is distance. Now, S was given to you as what? Distance. And T is time. What will be the units of A, B, and C? This is an exam question, 219. Now, we said for anything to be dimensionally consistent, your S must be equal to A T square, your S must be equal to B T, and your S must be equal to C. So, in this case, now, to get your A, we said S is what? A T square. So, divide both sides by T square. Divide both sides by T square. T square cancels C square. Your A is what? S all over T square. I believe that is clear enough. So your A now will be what? Your S, dimension for S, S is distance, is L. Dimension for time, which is T, is what? T, and this is squared. If this one crosses off, it becomes LT minus 2. And the unit will be A is LT minus 2. The unit is meters per second square. Now the next case is S is equals to BT. Now, for S is equals to BT, what will be the dimension? First of all, to get B, we divide both sides by what? T. Divide both sides by T. T cancels T. So, what are we left with here? B. S over what? T. Is that not so? So, B will be what? Dimension for S is what? Length. L. Dimension for time is what? T. Which will now be what? L, T minus 1. And the unit will be meters per seconds. Is that not clear? Now, the next, the last but not the least is S is equals to C. It means if S is equals to C, C will be equals to what? S. And then S, dimension for S. We are given here that S is distance. What is the dimension for distance? L. And then the unit will be meter. So, in that case, we have our A as meters per second square. Our B meters per second and our C as what? Meter. So that is the dimensions of each of these physical quantities. That's the dimension of each of these physical quantities. Now we are going to stop the class here for today. In our next class, we are going to look at other aspects of dimensional analysis. And that is the aspect that has to do with the derivation of the exact form of relation between measured quantities using dimensions. Thank you for your time. Please make sure you share these videos to your friends. Hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. Thank you for your time and bye.